Testing one, two. All right, this is Greg Doris here with Bob Ferrari. Uh, we're sitting on his back porch in East Nashville. I'm gonna ask him a couple of questions. We got uh, we got about 12 questions from a guy named Jeff Rowe in Colorado. Yeah, uh, Jeff Rowe's Dirty Dozen. Jeff Rowe's Dirty Dozen is uh, his thing. That's what he does. It's uh, interview 12 question interviews. So we're gonna do it for him today. Hello, Jeff Rowe. What's up? So uh, anyway, Bob Ferrari, I'm gonna pull up these questions over here. All right. And don't mind my phone. It is our microphone. It's recording us. So. So that way you can hear us clearly. All right, so Bob, you ready to start? Yeah, let's okay. do it. Okay. All right, so the first question is, other than this interview, what's the stupidest thing you've ever agreed to do? Stupidest thing I ever agreed to do? Uh, that's a hard question. What's the stupidest thing you ever agreed to do? Stupidest Agre thing I've ever agreed to do? Agreed to do. Uh, well, I, I don't want to piss anyone off, but maybe move in with somebody I shouldn't have a long time ago. I don't know. Yeah. That, I, I that may mine. be on the list. I got mine. Um, this girl needed to be a tattoo artist, and for her to make it, uh, she had to tattoo each part of the body. And until she did that, she was an apprentice and was having to get up at early times and all this junk and go run errands that she didn't want to do. Mm -hmm. So she's like, Bob, I can't find anybody to get a tattoo on their ass. Will you get that Bob tattoo you've been talking about? It's a B on each cheek, like a capital B. And I did that. And it's still on me today, and it was fucking stupid. So you got a B on each cheek? Yeah. So it says Bob. Can you show that to the camera? No. <laughs> Maybe on the, the a DVD extras. <laughs> okay. All right. So the stupidest thing Bob ever did was uh, tattoo his own name on his own ass. Yeah. That's a pretty good one. Yeah, yeah. Just glad I thought of that. <laughs> I'm glad you did too. All right, second question is, when the aliens land on Earth, why will you be the first person that they talk to? I don't think I would. You don't think you'd be the first person? No. I'd have a lot of questions for them. You don't think they'd come and say, Mr. Bob Ferrari of the human race, how do you make beats so fat? Uh, yeah, I could teach them to play some drums, but I think they'd be more into something else. I don't know. Um, what do you I think show, alien show... music would sound like? Uh, like techno or something, I don't know, bleep flops. Hopefully uh, Funkadelic, you know, something cool like that, Mothership. Oh, they always said they were aliens. Yeah, Yeah. I think it'd be more like that. I'd like to jam with them, hang out. I love that part on the uh, one of the albums, Electric Spanking of War Babies. It starts off and he goes, at the tender age of 13, I was adopted by aliens. And he like cracks up laughing and he keeps saying, <laughs> I was adopted by aliens. I haven't heard it. Oh, man, it's so good. I need to check it out. They sent me back with this message for you. And then it like goes into the dance song. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty cool. Oh, Lord. So, who would be the first person they talk to if it's not going to be you, Bob? Uh, the Dalai Lama? Yeah. That would be. That's who they, I'd send them to him if they asked, like, who should we meet? I'd, the Dalai Lama. Aliens, if you are looking for a good representative to talk to from the human race, I would start with the Dalai Lama, if he can make time for you. Yeah, oh, I'm sure he And could. I think if you're from another planet, he would probably want to hear what you have to say. All right, so, Bob Ferrari. Everyone knows Bob Ferrari used to play drums in the Pink Spiders and some other bands around Nashville called Wild Minds. Back in the day, Oliver's Army. Uh, Droopy, you played for rapper Droopy. Yep, Droopy. So, uh, Bob's a pretty accomplished drummer. He's done quite a few different genres of music. Um, as a drummer, do you carry paternity insurance? No. I don't even wear condoms. Never? You don't believe in them? Man, I just don't like them. Is that against your religion? Well, I'm usually drunk and doing that shit anyway. Um, it's a silly question, paternity insurance. No, I don't have any kids that I know of. If they want to find me, it's pretty easy this day and age. There you go. So, so if you think this man might be your father, hit us up. Bob Ferrari, Greg Doris. Uh, Jeff Rose, Dirty Dozen, we're gonna keep on going. Who could you spend a year sleeping with without getting bored? Uh, I got an answer for it, but you go ahead. What, what's your answer? My girlfriend. Yeah, see, I don't have a girlfriend. Uh, if I did, then that would be an obvious answer. Um, and I'm not gonna, I wouldn't say anybody's name, <laughs> you know, that I've already been with or anything like that. Uh, Someone I haven't met, you know, maybe like a crush or something. Celebrity crush. Uh, yeah, I like uh, Kate McCoochie. 
I don't know who Kate McCucci uh, is. From Garfunkel and Oates. Okay. It's a, it's a joke band. I haven't seen this. It's a TV show band, and right? And they got a TV show on Netflix. Okay. Yeah. Kate McCucci. I haven't seen it yet, but... Uh, She's hot. Kate McCucci, Bob Ferrari wants to get your phone number. I want to get more than that. All right. Okay, so... Um, so are you actually a Ferrari? Like, or, or was it Bob 1971 Ford Pinto and you just like to lie to decent folks? Did you change your last name to Ferrari or is that your real name? Or is your last name really Ford Pinto? No. <laughs> My mom asked me that question. Why are you going to change your name from Robert Ford to Bob Ferrari? I told her Robert Ford sounded too Hollywood. You know. Too Hollywood. Yeah, Bob Ferrari doesn't sound Hollywood at no, all. No, they just, you know, Robert Ford's just very Hollywood. Bob Ferrari, it makes you seem more like a, a real person. Uh, Andy Kaufman, he had a character uh, he played on Taxi, the show Taxi. Uh huh. His name was Laka Gravis. And uh, he tried to, Laka was a foreigner, and he tried to Americanize himself. And when he did, he changed his name to Vic Ferrari. And he was just around like, hey, yeah, just acting like a fucking jerk, you know? <laughs> and I, uh, like I just wanted to give a shout out to Andy Kaufman. I actually chose that name uh, when I was like 16. You know, mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, I want to use that. You stuck with it though. Yeah. Everybody knows the name Bob Ferrari. They know who you are if they know that name. Sometimes, unfortunately. But you know, it's funny. Okay, so Jeffro, that was actually a good question. I don't know if you know Bob's real last name. Can we say it? It's yeah, Bob it's Fort. Fort. Robert Robert William Fort. You were really close because you asked if his last name was Ford, Ford Pinto. And his name is Bob Fort, so it's pretty close. With a um, so you were onto something there, Jeffro. Uh, good eye there. Um, okay, so we are currently making a TV show. Uh, we don't necessarily know the name yet. We're thinking Bob Ferrari show, maybe the new awesome featuring Bob Ferrari. Uh, I like uh, the Bob Ferrari show featuring Greg Doris. There you go. Uh, or starring Greg Doris. Starring me. Starring Greg Doris. I'm the star, true. even though it's the Bob Ferrari show. Yeah. We all know that. Um, yeah, so me and you, we're making a TV show together and we're going to be interviewing other bands and uh, pe real people of Nashville, whether they're celebrities or just people. Uh, I don't want to say just people, but whether they're celebrities or people that you may not have heard of before, everyone in Nashville is doing something and working hard and doing something cool. So we're interviewing those people and working on that show right now. So what does a Bob need or want? and other bandmates or interviewees. What do I expect from other bandmates? Well, yeah, let's, that's a, it's a two-part question. Yes. Uh, I kind of changed your question around a little bit. Jeffro, I apologize. I'm going to kind of ask it the way you asked it now. You're currently interviewing other bands in Nashville. Mm -hmm. What do you look for in bandmates? We were just talking about this kind of, too. Uh, what, what I like is a good time. But, yeah, you, you're talking about uh, some uh, guy that plays country music. Says he likes three things. He, he wants to know mm -hmm. if he's getting paid, you know? Yeah, there's three things. This is a story I told Bobby uh, just a few minutes ago before we started filming. I'm, I, I work on some country tours doing sound, and I'm, I met a guy, really seasoned veteran, and he told me I consider three things when, it, when I accept a gig. Am I going to get paid? Um, do I like the music? And is it going to be a good hangout? Is it going to be fun? And so he says if he can get two of those three things out of a gig, he'll do it. So if he gets paid and he likes the music, but he doesn't really like the people there, he'll still do it. Or he likes the people and he likes the music, but he's not getting paid, he'll do it. Or if he's getting paid, hates the music, but he likes the people that he's going to hang out with, then he'll do it. So as long as he gets two of those three things, I think it's a pretty good that's, yeah, that was system. Yeah, that's a good uh, answer to that question. I think that's, I couldn't say it better. Yeah. Yeah. As you long, probably, as that's as probably what you fun. think about, isn't it? Yeah, as long as we're having fun and everybody's eating and everybody's rolling, you know, doing the same thing. Uh, if everybody's on top, that's cool. If everybody's on bottom, that's cool. As long as we're all equal, uh, just you know, just depends on what it is. But if it, if you're just getting paid to go uh, play on tour, I, which I have been interviewed, I, I keep getting lowballed. Yeah, it's just not worth your uh, time to be gone from your house and uh, be on the road with strangers that you don't know. You know you're gonna have to pay me for that. Um, I heard that. Yeah. yeah. But but if some guy comes along that'll do it cheaper, then they, they're usually going to get the gig. Right, right, right. But let's, you know. Can't be mad about it. No, no, hell no. No, we're all working out here. So, um, okay, and then the second part of that question, which I'm adding on to it is, what are we looking for from people that want to be interviewed on this show? What are we looking for from the people that we interview for uh, our show? Really, I like people that are candid, uh, honest, 
people that normally wouldn't be interviewed. Uh, a lot of everyone's got something to talk about and uh, something to be proud of. Usually, you know, something that they're doing. I mean, any everybody, right? You, you know, uh, a kid can show you a drawing that they made, and it can be interesting. I just like to take stuff that's not the same old shit. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, a like, lot of the same old things get the get to be seen on correct. in the media. It's like what's uh. You know what's going on with uh, One Direction or something like that. It's like you hear that this guy left that band like 50. You know, you see it 50 fucking times, mm -hmm. and it's like, well, what else is going on? You see what I'm saying? It's just all this shit gets run into the ground. And it's like, who cares? Mm -hmm. So can, like, enough about the headlines. What's really happening out there? Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. So, and would it be safe to say that we're trying to? show what's really happening in Nashville versus what you see on the media every day well, yeah, reinforced of about Nashville yeah. which that stuff goes on too but that's all that's visible mm -hmm. and there's a whole other community right like a uh, whole vibrant community it, it, though if you ask the world about Nashville you know they would they would just think country music they uh, whatever they see you know the world mm -hmm. so even the sitcom Nashville or I guess what is it like a drama uh, yeah on ABC I've never seen it, but I get it. I've seen the commercials, and they—it's gonna—that's what they'll think Nashville is like. You come here, and like people write your songs, and you go to vocal class, and someone teaches you how to dance. They put you on a diet, and that's not even really country music, you know. That's uh, it's not the way it was started. Well, it's pop music, you know. It is, and that's fine. I'm not down in that, but no, not at all. But to me, it's the same thing. Uh, you know, Carrie Underwood will be the same thing as Beyonce. Beyonce kicks her ass, but. Beyonce it's, does kick their ass, but, I, but, but I'm saying uh, no hate towards anybody because I right. like Beyonce and Carrie Underwood. Right? No, I'm not down in it. I'm just saying uh, that's what they would think when in real life that's not true at all. Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's you can like this guy plays music. My next door neighbor plays music. There's a guy that plays blues over here, and you can hear him, and he's really really good. But he's that old blues though, man. He sounds like you know a hundred year old guy that lives on the corner, mm -hmm. just plays for you know. What's he play guitar? This guy does over here. Yeah, yep. I never met him. I just hear him. Okay. We might hear him. He usually plays around this time on the weekends. Oh, yeah. It's just about noon on a Sunday. Yeah. All right. So, um, so all right. Uh, next question is, you live in Nashville. So, about the hot chicken. Are you willing to get fire breath on a regular... Or, no, no. He says, are you re willing to get fire on a regular basis or not so much anymore? How do you feel about the hot chicken in Nashville? I think we went to eat some chicken yeah. the other day. It's awesome. We went to Prince's Hot Chicken. Yeah, and they were talking about how they had uh, regulars. And I, if I lived close to there, I'd be a regular too. The price was right. and uh, it, Me personally, uh, I, I can eat hot food. Mm -hmm. I love it. Yeah, uh, Bob got the medium and he said it didn't tear him up at all. No, it's fine. See, sometimes I get the mild, sometimes it, it don't tear me up, but I think the mild's hot. Most people think the mile that Prince's is hotter than most places hot. Right. And Bob got the medium, and you know he thought that it was delicious chicken, but he did. He said it just wasn't hot. Yeah, it's good as hell. And, oh. and most of you probably would think that it's it's pretty hot. Yeah. It'd make you sweat a little bit. I can't handle sugar. You see what I'm saying? I can handle heat all day. I can take hot sauce and throw it on top of anything and mm -hmm. and go. My my thing. I'm a, a a bitch or whatever you want to call it when it comes to sugar. <laughs> I just can't handle like a girly drink or something that will make me just vomit. My body just rejects it immediately. But uh, hot food is, yeah. So yeah, Nashville chicken, hot chicken. If uh, you come to Nashville, make sure you get some hot chicken. Where, where would you recommend? What's a few places? What's your favorite? Princess. Princess hot chicken. Yeah, uh, they're the original. I like Pepper Fire as well. Pepper uh, Fire is good in East Nashville. And um, that's the only places I've ate at. Uh, there's Hattie B's. They're um, see, I haven't had it, but people they're more over in awesome. they're over in Midtown. Yeah, and uh, there's a new place called Party Fowl, which I haven't had yet, but I've actually heard they're pretty good. Fowl like chicken. Yeah, fowl like chicken. Party I Fowl. Heard of it. Uh -huh. And then there's 400 Degrees, who I think was opened by a former employee of Princess Hot Chicken. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah. I yeah. think that's what uh, our friend Mark was telling us the other day. It's Matthew. Matthew. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Matthew. I'll never remember people's Those names. Biblical but... <laughs> names. Um, yeah, I can't. Oh, and then there's also Bolton's, and they do spicy fish and chicken. They do yeah. like spicy fish too. We try the fish. So there's a lot of hot chicken in Nashville. It's a Nashville tradition. If you've never been to Nashville, it's worth it to come just to try the hot, the hot chicken. It's good. Awesome. Uh, let's see. So the next question is. Fire, Rhea. Who is, Bob? I know you like to read. 
Yeah. Who's your favorite author and why? Favorite author. Oh, shit. I, Kurt Vonnegut. Kurt just, Vonnegut's just, a good one. And, and the reason why is because he's the most entertaining. He is, isn't he? For me. I mean, when I, uh, the first time I read him, I just kept getting his books until I was done. Mm -hmm. I, and then, uh, it's kind of like an addiction. Like, you get that gateway book to Kurt Vonnegut, and you say, man, I want to read all of this stuff because he's simultaneously funny and insightful, and there's darkness to it. But at the end of it, his message is one of optimism, I believe. Mm hmm and uh, it shows the zaniness of humans, how, yeah, it does. How, how silly we all are, but how good our intentions can be. Right. Mm -hmm. now he covers the bases. Uh, yeah, Vonnegut. Kurt Vonnegut, shout out to you, buddy, even though I think he, he passed away recently. Um, yeah, I think he did. Mm -hmm. So, uh, any other authors that you want to mention? I like Charles Bukowski. Charles Bukowski's and good. He's, I just, he's entertaining. But uh, he's no Kurt Vonnegut. What's your favorite you know? Vonnegut book? Jailbreak. Jailbreak? I haven't read Jailbreak yet. Is that, or Jailbait? Is it Jailbird, Jail, maybe? Jailbird. I think Something it is. Something like that. I don't know. Cat's Cradle. I've uh, read Cat's Cradle. But I haven't, I haven't read a Kurt Vonnegut book in about five years. Mm -hmm. But I, uh, It's because you read them all already. I read them really fast, too. I had a job where uh, I didn't have to do much. Just had to be there. So after you're there... Uh, you can read, you can play music, you know. That's pretty cool. I bring a little keyboard with me and all that. It was like a, a third shift uh, guard job. It was like a weekend thing, so you just go there and you uh, work 12 hours a day. Mm -hmm. So you can just get 24 hours in real quick, but one, there's no one there. I mean, if you went to sleep, they wouldn't know. Uh, but I didn't, <laughs> you know, because if they did know, then what, you know, is good money for doing nothing. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like I said, you know, you can bring your. Uh, they're like, you can bring a guitar with you. I was like, can I bring a drum kit? And they're like, no. Yeah, that's one. That's like, one yeah, thing cool you may not be able to do. Yeah, it's cool people to work for too. But yeah, yeah, that was about seven, six, seven years ago. Okay. I need to get back on Vonnegut. See, it's probably brand new to me now. Yeah, you read them over and see. But I remember read like, something new in it. I think I think it was Jailbird. That was the name of it. I, I liked it. Uh, the very beginning just really gets you going. Mm -hmm. And when you can read in it. It's, you know, you're just like, holy shit. You know, you just, you just can't stop. Yeah, yeah. It's like getting on like a Netflix TV binge, but uh -huh. you're like just reading, you, you reading, reading. Yeah. You can't fall asleep until you finish that book. Yeah. So. Yeah, I've been there. Um, all right. So, what is your favorite album by another artist or band? Like, what's, or what, what have you been listening to this morning? What, uh, what music do you want to tell the world about? Um, I've been listening to Sturgill Simpson, his new album. Sturgill Simpson, that's a uh, country artist, is that yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, his new album's a uh, modern country, I don't know, it's a weird long fucking title, but uh, it's a great album. Uh, man, I cannot remember the name of that album. Uh, something something modern music. Okay. Uh, modern sounds and country music. His grandpa's on the uh, very beginning of it, I believe. Someone told me that saying the name of the album so i'm trying to remember because it's like now introducing the modern sounds of take this for know. a moment <clears throat> just keep holding that i'll look it up right now we'll uh, find it yeah uh but my favorite album like of all time should uh man that's a hard one i like uh clash is london calling that one comes about oh, yeah. I, I, can listen, I can listen to that every day uh I like anything by the Stones pretty much before the 80s. Um, let's see. Uh, Rancid and Out Come the Wolves. That's a damn good record. Uh, Pinkerton by Weezer. Oh, what a great one. That's a great one. Yeah, It that's, took him years to even like no, realize that that was an amazing album. Oh, you, dude, this was fucked up. Uh, <coughs> my, old, my old band's on Geffen. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And we're just there, whatever. And, so, and Weezer's on that label. And they're like, hey, you want to come in here and meet Weezer? It's like we're celebrating their album Pinkerton. It went gold. And it's like they're celebrating by eating fucking pizza. They're just all chilling, just like, hey, and you know, I shook their hands and all that. And it's like, the fuck, man? This is like the best record from in 10 years. It is one of the best records of the 90s, I think. To me. Oh, I mean, it's like maybe the best. And uh, 
for them to be eating pizza, you know, I get it. Like, they can go celebrate on their own or whatever, but no, you, <laughs> that, that album just went platinum. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, I mean, gold. Right. That's crazy. Hey, even people with gold albums eat pizza. Well, I'm, you know, I it, know what you're saying. It, it should be like 20 million copies sold at this point, not 500,000. Mm-hmm. It's ridiculous for the best album in the 90s. But uh, that, it was very surreal. It's like, fuck, man, if you try this hard and this is all you get, you know? Mm-hmm. And then if you go see Weezer Live and you, the audience will know uh, Buddy Holly and uh, Hashpipe. I remember seeing them out in California and everybody went bananas when Hashpipe played. Oh, yeah. When they played that and it's like, this, ain't, this is a good song, but it ain't the best. It's not not their best song for sure. Oh, absolutely not. Yeah. But uh, the... That's catchy. The, it's the, a good song. The kids liked it, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, and uh, I pulled this up. That so- that album, Sturgill Simpson album, is called Meta Modern Sounds in Country Music, which that I'm interested of by the name alone now. The first time I heard it, I listened to it four times in a row. There you go. Four so, times in a row, it's got to be good. Yeah. It doesn't get old. That's and, like uh, uh, Siskel and Ebert do two thumbs up. Bob Ferrari does four times in a row good. All right, back here with Bob Ferrari again. Uh, Got about five questions left on this interview. All right. Um, For Jeff Rowe, Jeff Rowe's Dirty Dozen out in Colorado. Thanks for uh, sending these questions to us, buddy. So, what song or accomplishment or project of yours are you most proud of? Uh, All of them. All of them? Yeah, all of them. Everything you've worked on, you go ham? Everything I've worked on. uh, I even... Do a little bit of rapping, Bassmaster Bob. Mm-hmm. I remember one of the first times I ever met you. You was doing it outside of Cafe Express in Mount <laughs> Julie, Tennessee. Yeah, that's high school. Uh, yeah, everything I do, I like. If I don't like it, I'll stop doing it. Mm-hmm. So, there you go. One way to live. So, taking it back to high school, should your parents have been more or less strict than they were? Uh, they were perfect parents. Perfect parents. Yeah. Uh, any parents that let you have a drum kit at your house and let your friends come over and make all that noise and be god awful too because when you're starting out you're not good you know it takes time and for anybody to put up with that then uh, you got it got it pretty good yeah I got I was blessed with nice good parents thank you mr. and mrs. Ferrari mr. and mrs. Ford (laughs) well we want to protect their identity they're mr. and mrs. Ferrari to them (laughs) <laughs> okay so anyway that Bob loves you he does thanks for watching Bob's mom um, what do you like least in this world what do I like least in this world yeah uh, greed greedy people yeah it is kind of the root of evil isn't it yeah it's, it's not it's unnecessary yeah People that want more than they need. And it's childish. So, uh, yeah, that's a, that's a good question, but we could go into that all day. Do you ever feel like you have a little greed inside yourself you let out sometimes? Everybody does. Everybody does. Everybody does. Yeah. Uh, but to, when you could help a lot of people and you choose not to so you can have two fucking jet planes or some shit, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Then uh, there's a special place in hell waiting on you. So, So we'll see you there. If that makes me a socialist or a hippie or some shit, then fuck off, you know. All right, Bob's getting heated up in here. Getting the real questions <laughs> I hate now. Greed. Greed. Bob hates greed. You know, I'm not a fan of it either. I um, guess, like I said earlier, as long as we, if, if you ain't eating, and I ain't eating. If, if you're eating, I'm eating. If it ain't going that way, then I'm leaving. Okay, so Bob, why do drummers insist on getting naked in public? The whole world wants to know. I haven't played a show naked since I was about, I guess, 19, 18. But you have played but, a yeah, show naked. But yeah, I don't. A stereotypical drummer does like to get naked. Uh, Was it because you're just moving too fast? Like you, you're just really working hard. I, I you think get it's, hot back there behind the lights. No, I think it's because you just don't give a fuck. It's like maybe if you're, that's how orgies get started. Maybe someone's got to get naked first, and uh, I guess that's usually the drummer. Um, 
I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Would it be safe to say if there's someone out there that wants to participate in an orgy and they never have, they should probably be friends with more drummers? <laughs> well, we got rhythm. There you go. Uh, I'm not going to be in any orgies. Looking for a nice girl to settle down with, getting about to that age. Yeah. So I think when he's asking why the drummers like to get naked, like I said, uh, I hadn't done that since I was grown. There you go. So. So. Uh, and it's you're gonna have to ask somebody else. Shock value. Bob doesn't rock. like to get naked in public anymore. No. But it's punk rock. That's why. That's why drummers do I think it. Just for the sake of, because it, because it's gonna piss somebody off. Yeah, but that—that's for that age too. When you're 16, that's how you feel, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> yeah, I remember one time I got—I uh, didn't get naked. I, I stripped all the way down to my tidy whities. Uh, I was uh, 17 years old playing playing yeah. a show, and yeah, and the, the Marlinda, she she shut the entire venue down, turned lights and sound off, and you can hear her in the vi there's a little video of it on YouTube, and she goes, "Put your clothes back on." So, you know, mm -hmm. there's also the time that I played, no, my band Noise Wagon played uh, the high school talent show and I kind of molested myself like Madonna would do, like on stage. And <laughs> since the mayor saw it and a bunch of angry mothers called in to complain, I, I got called into the office on Monday morning and got suspended. Yeah. The, the principal was cool though. He was like, I didn't think it was that big of a deal. I thought it was funny, but we got to suspend you because, so why don't you just go home and play video games for two days and come back? I was yeah. Like, Okay. Yeah, that's, I love those principles because uh, I get in trouble and those there's always that uh, boys will be boys kind mm -hmm. of thing. And it's like, God damn, I can't believe I got off that light, you know? There you go. Okay, so <laughs> this is the last question. Are you politically active? Do you have any stances or platforms that you would like to, no. to put out there? We already talked about the greed. That's how I feel about things. If you can help somebody, help them. And don't hurt people if you're just going to sit there. You know, that's fine. You have, you have a right to sit there, but if uh, you got something negative to say, it's, uh, the two rules <clears throat> they'll teach you in kindergarten. Okay, uh, don't tattle. And if you ain't got nothing nice to say, don't say it at all. And those are two very good, important rules that I feel a lot of people forget. Don't tattle. If you ain't got nothing nice to say, don't say nothing at all. If you can live by those, just in, try your damnedest. Because gossip gets around and that's always shitty. And then why are you going to tattle on someone? Mm -hmm. You know, they'll, they'll get caught doing whatever the fuck they're doing. You know what I mean? But if someone's like uh, always uh, trying to steal a beer from the refrigerator or uh, this or that, don't get involved with it. He, he, he took your beer or he's eating your pizza. Or so, you know what I mean? It's a little shit like that. Uh, to where it could be big shit. It's like, oh, this guy down the road is uh, selling guns. Like, uh, yeah, that might be something you want to tattle on. <laughs> if they, he's an arms dealer, but would I tattle? Uh, I don't know. Because someone else will. Someone you know? else will. Don't get shot by the arms dealer. Don't exactly. tattle. Exactly. Don't tattle. And there's not a guy down the street. I'm just making up shit. But uh, th those are for the most part, if you can live by those two. That's a weird question, though. It is kind of, but, well, you know, it's just, I think Jeffro wants to give you the uh, platform to say something that you want to say if, I'm if not, you believe in something. I, uh, leave, treat people nice and, and uh, what, whatever they do, just leave them alone. Mm -hmm. Let them be them. Let them be them. Someone's got tattoos all on them. Who gives a shit? Someone wants to go over here and do this and someone wants to go do that. That's their own business. Kind of the golden rule, right? Just yeah. don't step on people's toes. That's and right. Do your thing. Let people do their thing. If it doesn't hurt you, why bother? Yeah, it's not your business. Would it be safe to say, so politically speaking, would it be safe to say that, you know, that there's good people and mm, misguided people on both sides of the Absolutely. of the political spectrum? Absolutely. Conservatives, Democrats, liberals and Republicans and this and that. Yeah. Do you do you believe that one party is, is the right party? Not necessarily. Uh, I know Republicans usually like to go backwards. And Democrats usually like to go forward, but not all Republicans and not all Democrats. Correct. So, uh, but I don't like to go. If you want to listen to politics or something, you can, you know, you can go find that. Mm-hmm. So I like Great. the Daily Show, I like Stephen Colbert. You Who'd know. you vote for last time? Um, no. you didn't vote. 
I don't answer those questions. Guys. Okay, no, no. Because I, I, I don't find that entertaining. Gotcha. Okay. That's fine. You know, so. Right, so just, we'll edit this part out, or if we don't, whatever. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. So, the um, that was the last question. So is there anything else we want to say to Jeffro or anybody out there that um, may be reading or watching this? Uh, we appreciate your time. If anybody out there is looking for a drummer, you can hit me up. Uh, my contacts on Facebook, Bob Ferrari. Uh, thanks for having us, Jeffro. And uh, these questions were great. I had a fun time. Thanks for doing this, Greg. I really appreciate your time. Oh yeah, thanks for having me over. Uh, I enjoyed it. Uh, I thought they were great questions, Jeffro. So we can't uh, wait to see what you do with it. So. So until I find a band, and even when I find a band, we're gonna be working on this show. You know. Yeah. So give us a call if you want to be on our show. We'll interview you. We'll hear. We want to hear your story. And we'll have contact info up on the blog. Thanks for your time. All right, Bob Ferrari and Greg Doris signing off in East Nashville. <laughs>